All right. So let's look at the concept of work done in springs and elastic materials. All right. Before we look at this, let's consider something. If I'm given, um, if I'm given, let's say, a graph of force in Newton against extension in meters, you have something like this. So you have your O, your P, your E, your Y, your B. Let's explain what it means. So O there is simply the origin, right? O is origin. That's what O means. P is simply the proportionality limit. That means P. P means proportionality limit. E is simply called the elastic limit. Y is called the yield point and B is called the breaking point. All right, so you have all of this. All right, so I'll explain what each of these means. Of course, your origin is your starting point in the graph. Um, no big deal. Your P, we said, is called the proportionality limit. Now, what this means is that this is the limit where your, this is the limit where if I add from here to here, is the limit where if I keep adding a force, it will keep extending, all right? That limit where, of course, if I have a spring and I keep attaching loads on them, we'll see that the spring will keep going down, that it's keep extending downwards and downwards and downwards. Now, there's a limit to how far it can go. If I keep attaching load, it's got a point where the spring will break, all right? Like the spring will just snap and break off. Now, the limit at which that, that um, spring can increase, the more length I add to it is called the proportionality limit, all right? It's the limit to which a spring will extend if a force is being added on it or a load is being added on it. Now, we have something called the elastic limit. The elastic limit, of course, here's the idea. If I attach a load to a spring and I, it will extend, if I take off the load, the spring goes back to its original length. If I attach another load, let's say this time bigger, we expect that the spring will extend further downwards. If I take off the load, we expect that the spring will go back again to its original size. All right, that's what is called elasticity. The limit to which that elastic material can um, extend is called the elastic limit, all right? So the elastic limit is simply the limit to which an elastic material can still regain its original shape and size after it has been distorted. So how far can we extend a material and then it still comes back to its um, original shape and size? It's called the elastic limit. What's yield point? Yield point, now here's the idea. If I keep attaching, so what happens if an elastic material has gotten to its elastic point and we still attach a material? What will happen? You observe that if you keep attaching that material at a point, even when you take off the load, right? Even when you take off the load, you observe that the material will no longer come back to its, uh, its um, original length. It becomes deformed. What has happened there? It has gotten to its yield point. So, yield point is a point where an elastic material has lost its elasticity and becomes plastic. That state is said to be plastic. It's called plasticity, right? In a plastic state, we say that an elastic material has lost its elasticity and hence it does not return to its original shape and size after being distorted. So, that point is called the yield point. Finally, we have the last one, B, called the breaking point. What's a breaking point? First things first, we have a proportionality limit. We have an elastic limit. Beyond the elastic limit, if I keep adding a force, it becomes plastic. That means it no longer um, go back to, it no longer return to its original shape and size, which we call yield point. Now, if I keep attaching load, what will happen? At a point, the spring will just snap. And to break, to break off, right? That point is called the breaking point. 
The breaking point is the point where on further application of a force, the spring would break off. That's what is called a breaking point. So that's about this is your diagram. Okay. So from O to E, from O to E in this region here is called the elastic region, right? From O to E is called the elastic region, right? From E to B, that's from this part here, to B is called the plastic region, YB is the breaking point. So in every graph of force against extension, you have the elastic region, you have the plastic region. The elastic region is from your origin to your elastic limit, right? From origin to your elastic limit is called the elastic region. From the elastic limit to the breaking point is called the plastic region. All right, so that's about this. All right, so with that being said, let's now consider fully the concept of work done in springs. Now, let's say I have this one here. From here, we can see that the maximum force within the proportionality limit is this part here. So if I take this point here, whichever force I have here, this one here, and then this one here. All right. So if I take this, I'm having a tri I'm having um, something that looks like this. I have this. I have this. So this one here. And this one, this is force in Newton. This is extension um, in meters. Let's say I have something of this. So I'm taking from just the proportionality limit. I can have something that looks like this, taking this downwards. All right. And I can have this part here. All right. So the work done in spring is simply equal to um, the area under the force extension graph. That's all. So the area under the force extension graph, that's this part, the shaded region, which is this part here. This shaded part here is simply the work done in a spring. So to get it, you just have to find the area of this part here. If I look at this, we said this part here, which is my vertical part, is F. And then this part here, which is horizontal, is the extension. Okay, so force extension. From here, we know that what we have here is a triangle. And to find this, the area of a triangle is equal to half times base, perhaps E, times height, which is here, is F. If I multiply this, I have half in alphabetical order, F before E. So this becomes the area of um, the triangle right below the force extension graph now the area of this triangle is equal to the work done all right so i'm saying that work done w in spring is equal to half f e i have this so note that the work done in a spring or in an elastic material is also called the elastic potential energy since it's a work done or energy it is measured in joules please take note the s sign of this is joule so i'm saying w is equal to work done in spring also elastic elastic potential energy all right and it's measured in joules so we are saying that the elastic potential energy of a spring is equal to half F E. But then let's recall something. But, but we said F is equal to KE. From Hooke's law, we said this. If this is true, it means that W, which is equal to half F times E, F is KE. In place of F, I'll put K E, so half F times E, so I have E. Multiply this, it becomes half into K E, that's K, into E times E is E squared. So I have half K E squared. All right, so W is equal to half K E, or so W is equal to half 
F E or equal to half K A squared. So this is the um, formula for calculating the work done in an elastic material or the elastic potential energy. Of course, it's measured in joules. Let's take some few examples and solve problems on this concept. All right, um, let's take this question. And this question says, a spring is stretched 40 millimeters by a force 15 newton. What is the work done by the force? All right, so solution, as usual, our first task is to list out given parameters. So what are we given there? We said a spring is stretched by, a spring is stretched 40 millimeters. So the first thing I'm given there is the extension E as equal to 40 millimeters. Of course, I would have to convert my extension from millimeters to meters, which involves this, dividing this by 1,000. So divide this by 1,000. This gives me 0 0.04 in meters. Okay? Number two, we said a force of 15 Newton. So F is equal to... 15 newton what is the work done we know that work done w is equal to half f times e and that's equal to half times f force is 15 e 0 0.04 so half times 15 times 0 0.04 that gives you 0 0.3 joules all right so the solution to this question is simply 0.3 joules. Let's try yet another example. All right, so let's try this example. Um, this question says, a spiral spring is compressed by 0.02 meters. Calculate the energy stored in the spring if the force constant is 400 newton per meter. Uh, this, this is a GC question. But right, let's try this um, solution. All right, first you're given the Z, a spiral spring is compressed. Now, recall that I told you the concept of um, compression and extension. So, whether it's a compression or it's an extension, it's TE, that's a deformation E, which I explained before now as being 0 0.02 meters. We have to find the energy stored. They said if the force constant force constant is k it's about 400 400 newton per meter you have to find the energy stored so whether it's energy stored in the spring or work done in the spring or potential electric potential energy is the same thing all right so energy stored in a spring is the same as elastic potential energy which is same as work done is equal to unknown now we said, record that we said the work done is equal to half F E. There's no force here. In terms of KE, we said work done is half K E squared. We have this formula. So that means the work done W is equal to half into K. K is about 400 into E is about 0 0.02 squared. That's equal to half into 400. 0 0.02 squared should be about 0 0.0004. That should be your answer. Um, let me punch this to confirm. Um, so 0 0.02 squared, 0 0.0004. That's correct. So it means that W is equal to, if I punch all of this, half of 400 that gives you 200 all right so half of 400 is 200 into 0 0.0004 so w is equal to this times 200 and that's about 0 0.08 in joules so the work done is 0 0.08 joules all right so that's how we solve this question 
All right. All right, so let's get this done. Um, this example says a spring of force constant 1,500 newton per meter is acted upon by a constant force of 75 newton. Calculate the potential energy in the string. A is 1.9 joules. B is 3.2 joules. C is 3.8 joules. D is 5.0 joules. So how do we solve this? Solution here. My first task, as usual, is to list out given parameters. Now, if I look at this, there are two things here. There's a force constant and there's a constant force. Please don't mistake the two, all right? Your force constant, of course, is K. Number one, I have K. Force constant has been 1,500 Newton per meter. Now, in some cases, in some cases, to differentiate between which of them, because you have a force constant, you have a constant force. To know which is which, look at the SI unit. For this one here, SI unit is what? Newton per meter. And that's how you know this. For this one here, this is a force. Of course, the unit is in Newton. So number two, I have M. Force as what there? 75 Newton. All right, so I have these two. We're asked to calculate the potential energy of the string. Now, we know that potential energy is same thing as work done, W, which is equal to half Fe or equal to half Ke squared. So I have this. But if you look at this, for each of the cases there, you get force constant by multiplying force with extension or force constant with the square of the extension. But in the case where you have force constant and force, how do you express this? Well, that's that simple. Now, look at this. We know that F is equal to Ke. If I want to express E in terms of the force constant, you can say E is equal to divide here by K, divide here by K, K cancels K. So we can say that E is equal to force all over k or force constant if this is true we can say w which is equal to half f e is equal to half f is f what e we said e is equal to what there f all over k so the extension is equal to force over force constant if i multiply this this is equal to half f times f is f squared all over k so w is equal to half f squared over k now if this is true let's impute values this is equal to half into f what's f there the force is 75 newton so becomes f squared becomes 75 that's newton it's squared so i'm squaring this all over k your force constant is about 1,500. I'm having 1,500. All right. If I multiply this, this is equal to, this becomes 1 times 75 squared. And 1 times 75 squared gives you about 5,625 all over. I'm having 2 times 1,500, which gives you 3,000. If I divide this, I have um, 5625 divided by 3000. My answer is 1.875. Uh, if I approximate to one decimal place, this is approximately 1.9. I'm looking for work done. The S sign is in joules. So my answer is approximately 1.9 joules, which is this option. So the answer here is option A, 1.9 joules. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, simply like this video and subscribe to this channel. Also, I've prepared 100 classes on physics, chemistry, and mathematics. You can get to my website. Simply visit www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses and you see the YX slash 
jam classes, all right? So you can register an account to the site and then uh, place an order to get this course, all right? Thank you very much and see you in our next class.